Now, the British economy can be saved and this country can reverse decades of relative decline. The former Deputy Prime Minister, Michael Heseltine, has emerged from the Oxfordshire wilderness, promising to lead his people to the promised land. He was asked to come up with ideas for getting some growth back into the economy by the Prime Minister. And to no great surprise, the Prime Minister appears to think that Lord Heseltine has produced an excellent report. This despite the fact that it proposes a complete overhaul of government policy, his government's policy. Well, before I talk to the uh, biggest barnet in modern politics, Paul Mason is here, Paul. Jeremy, what a day. The um, discussion you've just had, the Europe discussion that's hung over politics in this country for decades, and then the other problem, the British disease, the economic problem, uh, dominating the headlines. Um, low productivity, stagnant regions, trade deficit, low innovation. Here's just two of the uh, graphics Lord Heseltine threw at us today. Um, there's GDP per hour worked uh, in France in 1990, Green Bar, Germany, USA. Uh, now we've narrowed the gap, the, the light blue bar is, is now, but still French workers, German workers and US workers produce more than British workers. This is a problem that's been with us for a long time and Heseltine um, points to it today. I, I tell you, the, the skills gap, that's really crucial because you can't spell relative. Uh, somebody, that's true. Some, I will only say somebody in Newsnight can't spell relative. Um, let's look at another one. Let, let's hope this one comes out better. Um, regional, that's spelled right, isn't it, Jeremy? More um, or less. Look, um, the, this is, these green bars show the, the, the relative uh, contributions to the economy of different uh, parts of the UK. And there in the middle, the pyramid, is uh, London and the South East, with more than a third of all growth coming from them. Now, these are, as, uh, you know, as we say, are not new problems, but they begin in an urgency by these proposals from, from Lord Heseltine today. OK, now, w w we're going to see the interview with Lord Heseltine in a moment or two, but just, j just give us your take on the core strategy here. Well, there are two words in that report that keep reappearing that you don't often hear in economic policy discussions in Britain. They are strategic and plan. And quite a lot of the times, they are there together in the same sentence. He's talking about a strategic plan for for British economic growth. He's talking about not just good ideas to make it happen, but a radical reform of institutions, which we haven't had, to make that possible, to even formulate the policy. Now, um, this, as you know, I mean, maybe we've got 16-year-olds watching this tonight who might be quite surprised that there's a debate between industry and finance or about growth policy, but it's been going on since we were 16. Um, the people who advocate what Heseltine advocates have never won the argument, and if they did, it would look like quite a different country. Welcome to Heseltinia, a new Britain with a strategy for growth. Better productivity, a strategic plan, government funding is pooled, civil servants are brigaded, everything is geared to growth. Now welcome to reality, an economy where productivity is low, growth sporadic and where the government has struggled to find strategic purpose. I have resigned from the cabinet and I will make a full statement later today. Lord Heseltine famously walked out of the Thatcher cabinet over industrial strategy. The 89 bullet points he published today sing to the same tune, conservative industrial dirigism. All departmental growth money would be pooled. There'd be a national growth council led by the PM. Then the money would be allocated to the regions. Councils would draw up strategic plans. Planning objections would be overridden by strategic considerations and there'd be clear and fixed policy on the energy mix and where the next airport gets built. Labour thinks it'll never happen. We've been advocating an active industrial strategy for some time where you've got government actually doing things, intervening, helping businesses to grow the economy. That's very different from the leave it to the market, laissez-faire model propagated by Margaret Thatcher. Now the sons of Thatcher in number 10s and number 11 Downing Street, this is not something that they would advocate, not something they would take on. So that is Heseltinia. A country where everything from the school curriculum to the election timetable runs to the rhythm of a growth strategy. Where Britain plays hardball like its competitors and where economic dynamism does not stop north of Watford.
Well, a little earlier, I spoke to Michael Heseltine when he dropped by. I asked him why the government needed him to produce a blueprint for growth if everything was going so swimmingly. The essence of what this government has done, which I find terribly impressive, is that they've had the guts to say to someone like me, look, you take an independent view. And that's what the best companies do. They say to their employees, look, we know we're not perfect. Tell us where we can improve. That's a sign of strength. Is there an element in this, too, that, as you say in your report, you are a successful businessman. You built a business yourself. George Osborne hasn't built any business. Well, he is actually masterminding the, the saving of this country's economy, which is what he's paid to do, and he's doing it extremely impressively. Where is the evidence that your scheme for devolving spending to local communities is actually more effective. Oh, right, the London Docklands. If I had told you there would be Canary Wharf, XL, the Olympics, a, an airport, and O2 in 1979, you'd have locked me up. Go to Liverpool, where in 1981 there were riots. People said to me, don't bother with them. There are no Tory votes left in those cities. I said, we can save this city. Go and look at Liverpool today. These are examples Go to from Central 30 Manchester. years ago. Well, wait a minute, you want answers. Go to Central Manchester. Look at the human state and all of that that happened there. This, everything I propose, is based on what has already been achieved. But when you talk about these reviving these great northern industrial cities, all, Manchester, all our cities, all our cities, or Liverpool, or yeah. Gateshead, none of them's got even a single Tory councillor, do they? Well, uh, frankly, Jeremy, I'm not in the business of saying, are they Labour, Lib Dem, or no. Conservative? What I'm in the business of saying, can we make these cities contribute more to their prosperity and national prosperity? But you've cited examples uh, from recent history. The argument is that the modern Conservative Party, the sort of people who are currently running the government, have no natural sympathy or understanding with those great cities. Well, I wholly disagree with that view. I think that the government has set up my inquiry precisely because they have sympathy with those cities. But in the end, what you're proposing is a revival of the old idea of picking winners. You even mention it in your report. Do you, you want to pick losers? Is it the business of government to be picking, well, we hope they'll pick winners, picking winners at all? But, but Jeremy, if you go to Whitehall, they are spending money on specific grants, on specific companies, on specific projects. And they don't know what they're doing? Is that the problem? No. They're they picking are, losers they, by default, by not, mistake? They are picking winners. That's what they do. And if you move outside this country to every equivalent capitalist economy, they have a machinery of government to pick winners. And I am unrepentant in saying if you're going to use taxpayers' money to support the capitalist system, for God's sake, make the right decisions and don't make bad decisions. Well, why are they making the wrong decisions and the bad decisions now? I didn't say they were. Uh, you, well, in that you, case, we you, don't need a change of strategy. Uh, no, <laughs> the, we're on to two different subjects. One is the individual decision to put grants in the way of individual projects, and I say you are picking winners. But what, what I'm, the, the, the essence of my report is you should do it more professionally across a wider spectrum, but on the other side, you should take money that is currently spent within government in things like housing and transport and uh, education and training, and you should say, instead of civil servants in London saying, well, what we think Manchester should have is some more transport or some more roads. What you do is you go to Manchester and you say, this is the money we've got. What would you do if you could design the solutions? Well, why have we got a system in which we're spending money remotely and unprofessionally? Well, I, I would not use your pejorative language. No, you, I use, think no, I, you said I, London, I, London you, first of you, all, you, as opposed to locally. You used, you used, the, words, used the word professional you as opposed used, to what we have now. You used the words unprofessional. I'm not in any way saying that what we do when we back a housing scheme or back a road scheme is unprofessional or incompetent. What I am saying is it fits a pattern of national London-based decision-making when I want to see it decided in Leeds and Newcastle, Manchester, Plymouth, wherever it happens to be. But working to a national council chaired by Correct. the Prime Minister. There's no more centralised figure in the country. Well, but look, there is no one else who can make anything happen in this country. You must have heard time and again Prime Ministers saying, we pull the levers, but it's connected with elastic. Nothing happens. 
And you don't think that's the antithesis of localism? Uh, I don't think it is at all. I think that if you are actually sitting making all the decisions in London, that is centralism. If you share the decision making with the localities, that is localism. Michael Hastine, Lord Hastine, thank you. Thank you.